It's been raining non-stop. This is non-stop soaking rain like this for over 24 hours. And my plants, my succulents, and my garden uh, is just loving it. And everything is looking so lush. Even the grass for my budgie. <laughs> but look at this Hoernia piercii. Look at the flowers. So this one, actually, they normally smell bad or stink. But this one's doesn't smell. It's actually got a very, very mild scent. So that one's already finished blooming. It's no, doesn't stink. But look at the beautiful flowers. And they're gorgeous. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. I have my Echeveria Gavoidis Romeo Rubin sheltering here from the rain. Not because I'm afraid it's going to rot, but because I need to pot it up or repot it and put it in a pretty pot because they really are getting distorted. See that one there? I don't want it to get deformed. I want you to be perfecta mundo. So I don't want a deformed leaf. But anyway, let's go out into the rain. Now, we'll go on walking in the rain. I'm going to show you. Actually, it was Hubby who pointed this out. Okay, can you? Why don't we have a video about the sound of rain? Okay, I'm actually just going to check the ones here that are soaking. Oh, look how much water is in there. So if you see in the video yesterday, they were actually dry. And now look how much water. There you go. Soak, baby soak. So different succulents. I've got sedum, I've got echeveria, and I've got this really delosperma frunosum, foinosum. Oh, okay, which is really, really dry. But look at that. Poor things, it's got hair in, it's about to flower, but only when the sun comes out. And brown ghost plant beautiful that's a beautiful beautiful pink plant and of course the little agave creme brulee is enjoying the rain but this is where i want to go and check some of these areas here doesn't get watered at all okay my peruvian uh blue is good oh look how beautiful lola lola la 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 lola which is actually a derenciana the grass are growing <laughs> the bluebird is blue uh, my lemon and lime is lemon and lime beautiful or actually is that a blade runner I don't know I have to look at the label but doesn't matter I can't um, I'm running out of hands and my Vera Higgins and down in the bottom Paddy Pete Paddy Peat, Vera Higgins. So I'm going to do a video of those two to show you the difference. But anyway, oh, hang on. Take a look at this pink one over here. I'm getting wet. How beautiful are you? Oh, my Lord, you are so gorgeous. Still, even without the sun, look, the flower is about to open up. But anyway, it's actually pale, a little bit pale now. They're much brighter when there's sunlight. Do we have root rot? No. I'm confident to say there won't be any root rot happening except for those ones. Oh, speaking of root rot, remember this one? See, it's recovered nicely now. See, look at that. So now all I have to do is put some more succulents in there just to fill it up. But then that's a video on how to uh, fill up the gaps on your succulent arrangement. And look at this pink. What are you? Is that Graptovaria or Graptopetalum? Are right? 
something like that. But anyway, it's just beautiful. But look, the crested, they were much pinker the other day. So when it rains, the color actually dulls up. As they absorb the rain or water, and especially if there's no sun, it's just a matter of a couple of days. And uh, if, if there's a tone, um, what do you call that? A grading or rate of toning, <laughs> say one to 10. So if they're an eight today and two days later, if there's no sun, uh, they become six. So that's what I've noticed because that one is much, much, much pinker a few days ago, three days ago when uh, it wasn't raining and the sun was out. So everything just sort of turns green. And speaking of green, let's go show you. I'm going to show you. Uh, see, even that one, they're all dull. The color has dulled up. It's not as fiery as it was yesterday even. So even the Romeos, so the babies, look, look at the baby of the, I have to remove one of the leaves, leaf of that Taurus there because I thought it was root rotting, it was just dry leaf from the video after, so I was here last night or this morning, early in the morning checking, I was like, are you root rotting? No, it's not, it's because it's got so much babies, so it has to create space for the baby, so that's my Taurus and everything so that Romeo I'm gonna put you in a big pretty pot and gonna chop your head off now I'm gonna put you in a big pot just prettify you I won't uh, cut your head off and oh the crassula hang on crassula is flowering hang on wait a minute trying to look at my arms stretch out because oops I'm gonna hit my sunburst my crested sunburst there are you beautiful okay I need to see it so but I can't see it right now so there you go and have you seen a bigger sedum clavatum? So that's the sedum clavatum and it's huge. Okay, I just got wet. Okay, huh? water droplets. And those are my sedum clavatum. Now, that one now, I suspect that could actually be a spatulifolium. So it's like this one's here. See, and that's a sedum clavatum. And sedum clavatum and spatulifolium but check out the the room graptopetalum the room asheray oh my goodness they're so pretty so fat look just gorgeous gorgeous or graptopetalum ellen i think they changed the name now i suspect there might be two types maybe the smaller one is graptopetalum the room asheray and shuere and then the other one might be ellen because i'll show you a big one this is Graptopetalum ellen and it's huge it's huge okay comparison now look see big they're quite big and down in the bottom here is my original the ruma shuray so the ruma shuray and ellen or ellen they're actually now one and the same but i'm finding that i have a small variety and a large variety see there you go so even in the pot here look even that one there is a difference so I reckon there is um, a Korean hybrid and I don't know the standard hybrid who's the standard <laughs> is it the Western world is there an American and Australian version or European version or Korean, Chinese, Japanese version? I don't know, but it seems to me <laughs> that the Korean ones are smaller and compact and more colorful. So colorful. So, okay, let's go outside. Look, <laughs> I'm pushing, go, go, hang on. Let's go here. Now, if it's gonna bang, there's no wind anyway, but I'm like raining over all my succulents. See? Okay, even the look over there. And that asparagus needs to be chopped chopped. Now, this is how I collect water. The hibis boats here. <laughs> and look how much rainwater it's got. 
Woo! So now that one, I actually collect them. I uh, put them in a bucket. So this is over 24 hours. That's how much rain is in uh, this boat. Because see, I'm collecting all the rain going in there. But anyway, let's go check out the garden. So most of them are green. This one I'm meant to pull out all these plants because they're just um, the Francesco Baldi is just um, crowding out all the other plants. Okay, my cottage garden plants are half of them are dead. Oh, sorry. Oh, that scared me. See, I knew it. It's gonna bang into the whatever. But anyway, so this is all. Let's go check out. Okay, not beautiful. They are loving the rain. Look at the Bernalensi, Graptopitalum paraguayensi, Bernalensi. Beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous pink. It's like cute, cute, cute pink. They are ripening, I would say. But in here, uh, that's, is that, are you dry? Yep, that's wet. Most of these plants that are in the garden are all, they are really, hang on. That is, I'm trying to, what do you call this, not move so much so you can see the plants. They're mostly green, okay? So that one is Graptopetalum, um, oh, Graptocidum, Graptopytum Supreme, sorry. That one, Graptopytum Supreme. This is Graptopetalum paraguayensi here, or the ghost plant. And they are green and gray and large if they're planted in the ground. Even um, the comic storm, Sidum comic tom is, what do you call that? Blue. <laughs> blue. It's blue. Ebony. Look at the ebony. That is my very, very first ebony ever. And I got in the garden and then there was one before and tiny and then now it's two. This is my neon breaker and I have another neon breaker down in the bottom so that's also a neon breaker. This is now actually experienced a couple of winters, this neon breakers here. So it is frost hardy and up to minus seven or minus eight. Did we get minus eight? I'm not sure, but I think minus seven point six or something like that, uh, that I've exposed it to. And a lot of these plants you can see now, oh, what's flowering? Oh, I love the flowers of the compact form of Longissima. So anyway, everything is green and lush and whatever because of the rain. There you go. So now even the, look at that, not beautiful. Uh, I have an appointment, so I'm in a rush. <laughs> look, so I've got now two minutes and I gotta go. Just showing you what happens with the rain. If they're in the soil or in the ground, you're not gonna get root rot. Okay, but the plants are big. So look, that is, I can't remember what you are. You're actually probably Domingo. And so the, the plants are big and large and look at the frillies over there. They're all huge and beautiful. Look at you, gorgeous ones. Anyway, oh, the bump showing on that one. So I actually mix up, I don't know which is which on those ones because there's about four types of frillies, chiveria, uh frillies in there. Now, there you go. So that's it. So no root rot. We don't have root rot, people. And oh, Serana. Oh, I love, 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 love your color. You're beautiful. So I think we still have a couple of days of rain, which is good. But this spot here is not getting rained on at all. So I really have to do something about this section here. I'm actually going to put some plants in there that doesn't like the rain so much. Look, nice big, huge. That is even huger. <laughs> it's bigger. That's a Pollux, a Chiviria Pollux. And oh my goodness, my Victorera is getting big. That is big. And look how many babies it's got. Really. See, more soil. If you want more succulents, put it in big pots or in the garden and more soil. And if you want to color them up, harvest them and put them in a pretty pot. And an advanced soil mix. 